All right. So who's got a topic idea? Uh, the one I have is what tools do you want, but more importantly, why do you want them? Oh, that's Ooh. cute. <laughs> I was going to try and offer the idea of making signs again. I really, I made a really cool sign this week. Well, I made that dickle sign last week. I could talk about that. And then this week I got another sign, a really cool sign. It was like an emergency job. So I could talk about that, but um, just, that's just my, my two cents is starting a sign business or how to make money making signs. I like that. Bob, you have anything? Um, yeah, kind of. A couple people have asked about like when, when do you get somebody to work with you or for you or when do you farm out certain parts of what you're doing to you know hmm. more specialized people? And that's in my, I don't want to say near future, but in my future. So, yeah. Well, I, I like that because I, I can offer some uh, insight that, that occurred this, these last few days for me. Hmm. Yeah. My, I, I kind of like the sign thing. Jimmy's pushed for it two weeks in a row, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and yeah, it seems see very that. relevant. And then we could t- I could talk a little bit about my situation, which relates to what Bob talked about. Sure. Cool. That's going right. on this week. All right. Sounds good. All right. Welcome, everybody, to episode 28 of Making It. I'm Bob Claggett, here with David Picciuto and Jimmy Duresta. Howdy. How you, do- How you doing? Very good. What's up? What's up, man? Um, I am currently, it, you're, you can probably hear like water behind me and like cars driving. And birds. So and birds, birds, birds yeah. More than Cicadas. I am in the backyard at my parents' house in Kentucky. So sitting on a nice covered porch outside because yeah. the internet didn't really work very well inside the house. Well, in where I could fit. The rest of the house is covered in kids. So, <laughs> uh, Speaking of signs, what does it say right over your shoulder? Right. Oh, and there's fireworks. Oh, well, that should make for an interesting podcast. Perfect. Um, that says slow grandparents at play. The other and shoulder. That one? No, the other shoulder. <laughs> Welcome to our garden. There's lots of oh. signs. <laughs> oh, wow, the fireworks. Fireworks are right around the corner. You that sure that's somebody that doesn't like our podcast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drive by. So, there goes again. Oh, wow, there's a lot. Yeah. So the other night we did fireworks for the fourth, right? And so we drive up through from Kentucky through Georgia. Uh, sorry, <laughs> from Georgia through Tennessee to Kentucky. And Tennessee is where you buy all the good fireworks. You can't buy the good ones in Florida, Georgia, or Kentucky. So I buy, like, you know, decent fireworks. I get up here, and my parents had bought a whole giant box. My cousins brought some, and then my uncle bought, like, the, the crazy, barely illegal ones that are ridiculously <laughs> loud. And so we ended up setting off uh, an insane amount of fireworks in our backyard that just kind of shook the entire... It would be funny if you were just sitting in a black of like in a pile of like black scorched smoking wood. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like the fireworks just went horribly wrong. Everybody still has all their fingers and eyelashes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody's good. We did have one kind of the final one for the night. We had these mortars, um, and so I set off some mortars and they were fine. They were just like canisters. And then this, this last gun I tried were a ball with a kind of a cap, like a blasting cap at the bottom. And the cap was the launcher. But it was dark, and I couldn't really tell what was what. And I just dropped it in this thing, you know, lit it, and ran back. And I dropped it in upside down. <laughs> so instead of going up, it shot down and didn't go anywhere. It just exploded, and the entire mortar was gone. Mm. Nothing. I got it. Spark uh, classic, <laughs> classic firework accident story. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this link in the, in the show notes, but there's this clip, and it's of a wiener dog. I watched. I saw it. I saw yes, it. Yes, yes, where the, where the wiener dog grabs the... the yeah, Roman the, candle. Yeah, something. and it's I just start. shooting out, and he's running with it, and it's like firing at, at this family and everything. It's, it's hilarious. It's, if I you saw that. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, you need to look for wiener dog fireworks. Yes. Very funny. Yeah. Uh, before we get to what we're working on, uh, we got to say, we got to talk about our sponsor, Inventables. Thank you, Inventables, for sponsoring this episode. Um, they are the maker of the x carve the big CNC machine. Well, I guess they have a small one, but I am I have more of the uh, big one on my mind because I recently just did a project where I made it flip up to the wall, and mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's really big, and so it has a lot of cut area. It's a really good machine, but it also takes up a lot of space, and so luckily I was able to find a way to you know get it out of the way when I don't need to use it. Um, but they, they sell, you know, the machine, the bits, everything you need. They have a bunch of different options for spindles for the machine, a bunch of different parts and crazy materials. A lot of good sign materials, actually, since we're going to talk about signs, they have a lot. Yeah, of that's, that's why that's been on my mind as well. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, they sell a lot of two-color plastics for you to cut out. We can talk about that later. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, thanks to Inventables for sponsoring this episode. And I didn't mean to interrupt our talk. I just didn't want to forget to do the sponsorship. <laughs> thing. No, no. It's awesome. So back to wiener dogs and fireworks. <laughs> I just I wanted to say I just got some two colored um, plastic from Inventables. I'm I'm holding it up in front of the camera, which most of you can't see, but it's black on one side and gold on the other. And when I'm I'm going to use this for my guitar build for oh, the cool. headstock, yeah. and the black is a really really thin layer. So I'm just going to carve um, my guitar logo which will be revealed in a couple weeks um through the black so the gold will be revealed with the logo and then i'm going to lacquer over top of that so nice oh, what vertical. about the pit guard can you do the same thing with the pit guard uh, the pit guard i actually got what is what is this called turquoise shell and i'm just it's it's a it's one color and i'm just going to cut the, the the shape of it but i suppose you could do that with um a pit guard too is at shapes in there, but I mean you are going to cut the pit guard on the on the X guard out of the. That is plastic. correct. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Well, we'll just, um, is that what you're working on this week? You still working? No, on no, 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 no. We've been on vacation, um, hanging out at the family cottage. I know that sounds all uppity, um, but we're <laughs> we're lucky enough to have a, a nice family cottage on Lake Erie, so we've been hanging out there for the past week. So nice. I've been working on nothing. <laughs> working on your tan. That's yeah. What working on. You like it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Looks uh, a lot like last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I Did went we... camping. I went camping this weekend. Tal and I went up to uh, the uh, uh, the Adirondack Mountains, Marcy Marcy Mountain. And uh, day one, we hiked in about four miles, found a place to camp. And uh, I was doing Snapchat, so the people – it's funny, the fireworks are still going off. <laughs> so we, I was doing Snapchat, so I'm going to try and do Snapchat more often just when I have like a funny story to tell that isn't really necessarily YouTube worthy. And uh, so I, I think a lot of people will follow me on Snapchat on my camping trip. And uh, so it's pretty funny. It's funny. We talked for like a half hour before we started and there wasn't one firework. As soon as we start, the fireworks are going off. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so typical. But yeah. no, we, we had fun. We camped uh, two nights. The second night, it started raining. So we still had about an hour of sunlight to, to march, to hike out of the mountain. So I was like, let's get the hell out of here and go to a hotel instead of just sitting in the pouring rain. So we did mm -hmm. that. And we ended up in Lake George. And then by the end of Sunday, I was up at my house in, in – uh, Green County, uh, just check. We always have to go check and make sure the renters don't break anything because we only have 24 hours to report. So renters had left. So we took over the house and then we ended up back in New York and I immediately started a new bar cart build that I got the green light for while we were away. So it's one of those things where like the client's like, oh, can we do this? How much would it be? When can it be done? Da, 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 da. And I just basically forgot about it because they've waited so long. And then while I was away, it's like, okay, do you think you could start this project Monday for delivery on Thursday? Ooh. So, so I, that night, I, since I got the email over the weekend, that night we stopped at a Lowe's and I bought all the material I need. And, uh, I started working at like eight the next morning and, um, I've just been kicking butt. And, uh, so it's a bar cart with a marquee set of letters for bullet bourbon. And it's for, uh, there's a big whiskey event taking place in New Orleans that I'm going to next week. Hmm. So I have to send it ahead of time because it takes five days to ship it because it's freight. So it's uh, it's been a crazy. Did you three just days. post pictures of that on Instagram? Yeah, that yeah. that black pipe bar yeah. cart, and then it gets a marquee, which is a, a set of letters that I made in the last. Uh, I started them last night at six o'clock, and I just got them to the point where I'm comfortable considering them done. The rest is just cosmetic, and uh, so it's a set of marquee lights, which I'll put on uh, Instagram shortly. As long as, you know, as soon as they okay it for me, I don't want to like, sometimes they get weird if I put stuff up before they get a chance to see it. Hmm. So the, uh, the letters themselves look pretty cool. I'll send you guys pictures while we're talking. Yeah. Nice. But, cool. Yeah. So it's, uh, they look like old vintage, like carnival letters with light bulbs in them. Mm. Oh, nice. Yeah. I've been wanting to make one like that for a long time. I've never gotten around to it. Yeah. I'm going to send you guys a picture of it right now. But yeah, that's it. So I've been doing that. I'm making a video of it. And just before we started talking, I opened up iMovie and like, 80% of the clips aren't showing up in iMovie, so I'm panicking a little bit. Mm. I, I have them. They're on the computer, but they're just not showing up through the interface. Hmm. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure that out. Well, speaking oh. of – oh, go ahead. Yeah. 
Oh no, I was just going to say, and then I, uh, I was wondering, did you guys get a chance to see uh, my 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 dovetails this week? I, the bench. Yes, I still haven't I watched it. Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta take a look. Yeah, it was it was a fun one, and that it was, was exciting to work for a new client. So that yeah, was exciting. that was the the core seventy seven video, right? That's right. Yep, and yep, yep. and we've we talked about it before, but you did like a little yep. DVD extra narrative over top of it, and I, I really liked yeah. how that was done. Thank you. Now I want to do it for all of them, but I kind of promised them exclusivity on that for a couple of months. So no. yeah, that I think that I think it's going to work well for you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So that was cool. Speaking of uh, camping, I went camping in my parents' backyard with all my kids the other night. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Not at all the same experience, but a different kind of terror. Um, no, it was a lot of fun, but it was you know it's just kind of crazy. Like four little kids and my wife and I in this one tent and uh, trying to get the kids to calm down to go to sleep and all that. So made for a long night. But yeah, so this week I haven't really done anything either. I've been in Kentucky um, since over the weekend and, you know, spend time with family, enjoying the 4th. And my parents always have a big family get-together around the 4th, and so I get to spend a lot of time with a lot of people, which is really cool. And today um, I went over to my grandfather's house, and you may have seen on Instagram, I posted a picture of a, a carved wooden fish mm-hmm. that he did. It, that's like one of, I, I can't even imagine, maybe 300, wow. 400. The detail on that is crazy. And not he just does, the carving detail, but the, the colors and everything. Yeah, and, and the thing that doesn't come through in the photo is that he glosses those with like this really thick gloss finish, and they look wet. Hmm. So it, it's a fish that looks like you literally just pulled it out of the water and stuck it on a desk. They're really <laughs> awesome. Nice. Which It doesn't smell like that, which is a good thing. But so this afternoon, I went over to his house and uh, got to just, you know, he showed me around in his shop and was like, hey, you want this thing? Hey, you want this stack of wood? Hey, you want this? And oh, hey, you know, nice. He's awesome. Um, but I got to take That's incredible. Pictures. I'm looking at the it's, fish now. It is really beautiful. I took a bunch of pictures of the birds because he also does birds. And wow. um, so I took pictures of more fish and more birds. I'm going to try to post some of them over the next couple of days so people can see because he's amazingly talented. Is he and, carving anything right now that you can get some footage of? Um, not really. Right now he's painting. He's also a painter. And so he's doing, he grew up in the thirties in a small town near here. And so he's painting what all the buildings on the town square looked like from memory. No kidding. Yeah. Like all the way around. So it's like eight paintings, every two of each corner. And then there's like a couple more little bits, but so he's, you know, putting what, what the stores were and what the restaurants were when he was a kid in the thirties growing up in this small town. So cool. So he's spending all of his time that, you know, doing that. And, uh, yeah, so he's amazing. And it's really awesome to get to spend time with him every time I'm up here and see what he's How still working he on. I, I don't remember. Late 80s, early 90s. I'll have to ask him. He's coming over for dinner. I'll ask him tonight. Maybe put it in the show notes. <laughs> All right. But, yeah, so I'm on, you know, I'm on vacation, too, just doing stuff. Started my marathon training this week. Oh, is, how, how long, of, how long is, does that take? 18 weeks. Yeah, so and I'm starting up here where it's all hilly and not at all like Savannah, which is super flat. Hmm. So you're about five hours away from me in in Louisville. Maybe we should uh, meet for dinner tonight. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for listening, everybody. I want to go and meet Dave for dinner. See you guys. <laughs> that's funny. So um, I was uh, talking about it. signs. So let's talk about I, signs. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, uh, you know, I, I, it seems to be a lot of the work that I've been getting and, um, lately, I mean, it's all brand work stuff, but I, I do do some signage for like just small, local shops and some stuff. I try to stay away from signs that are exterior signs because those are the ones that, you know, get destroyed. Actually, just the other day, uh, I turned down a job, a, a guy offered me a job for, um, basically a white acrylic box that would like attach to the corner of a Brooklyn building. And I just, he just said he wants it to be like a glowing cube. I said, you know what? I, I gave him a price and he, he kind of choked and he's like, well, that's a lot of money. I said, well, I said, I'm getting up on a ladder. You know, I said, there's a lot to it. And, uh, you know, I got to electrify it and I might have to hire an electrician. And I said, as soon as a, you know, a, a squirrel makes a nest inside of it, who are you going to call? He goes, you. I said, there you go. I said, so you didn't pay for follow up and everything else. I said, um, so that's why I try and stay away from exterior signs, basically, because there's just too much upkeep. But interior signs are fun because you could use pretty much any material 
It's not going to get beat up by the weather. And, you know, the coolest thing of all about making signs these days is that we could use CNC machines to make perfect letter <laughs> forms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. uh, I mean, I, I love letter forms and, and I love it when they're perfect. For years, I, I just always would use a bandsaw and I would just like insist I don't need anything but my bandsaw and a thin blade and I could do everything. But, you know, now when you could make like little tiny, little perfect letter forms that are like a half inch thick engraved in something or metal or even like on my key, I, I engraved some stuff on my key, which is like literally like smaller than a quarter of an inch high. That's just, that's just so incredible. And that's, uh, you know, that's, what do you guys think? What, well, what's <laughs> your, I'm, I'm curious because you've done more, probably more, well, definitely more commercial sign work. What's your workflow from a CNC perspective for doing start to finish, you know, for doing a, an existing logo and making signage out of it? Well, for instance, this week I made, I just sent you guys pictures. I made this crown Royal. I made this this morning at like eight in the morning. I made a crown Royal sign. Um, for this upcoming event, I'm going to be in New Orleans next week. And um, they wanted, they, they're going to have like a theme thing, like an OK Corral. And they just wanted an old piece of wood with beautiful letters. So they're kind of going like chic, rustic, if you can imagine. So mm. the letters are cut out of this material. I used it in the Nashville sign. Um, it's basically a, a, a chrome Fomica. It's real chrome because it's actually real brass with a really fine thin sheet of chrome on them on top of it. And, uh, so it's, they take the brass and they dip it and they actually give it like genuine chrome. So I was able to mount that to wood and then CNC right through the metal surface into the wood. So it's basically laminated MDF with a layer of chrome on the front. And then I spray around the edge of the letters black. So this morning I started out, I, I set up my CNC file. So the crown Royal logo breaks up into several pieces. So I'm able to, even though the logo is going to be four and a half feet wide or four feet wide, I can break it up and, and group it or, or nest it together inside of 18 by 24, which is what my, my CNC machine does, the bigger one. Uh, and so I was able to put it on that and then cut through, get all the pieces out of it, and then piece it together on a piece of old rustic board, which I just I stained, I stained dark brown. So I have the chrome letters on the dark brown surface, which is just like an old rustic cut board. So that was pretty easy. I glued the letters down. with uh, I always use goop, usually like a, like a real strong silicone. Mm. Something like that goop or ED6000 is another type of goop. It's the same type. It's the same smelling glue. I don't know exactly what it is, but it smells the same and it works really good. So. What, what about your the CNC part of it, though? Actually cutting the letters, getting, you know, from a uh, company. So, I'm just, I know this process, but I think some people listening may not understand. Oh, yeah. The I, always so. ask, I always ask for the file first. I say, do you, have a, uh, do you have a vector file of your logo? That's what I always ask for first. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, I take the, the vectored logo and sometimes. They'll send over like a piece of printing vector, which has like thousands of like files in it. I just want the basic outlined logo so that I could use that as my cutting path. So that's typically what I do. Sometimes they don't have that. They, you know, they, you know, the, the artist isn't available or the guy who ever made it, they don't know who he is or where he is because I'm dealing with a brand person that's like far from the art department, you know, as far as personnel goes. And I'll just get, I'll find it online and then I'll make my own vectors by using um, uh, Live Trace through Illustrator. Mm -hmm. So I do that a lot. So uh, sometimes I'll find the actual logo uh, if I find an actual picture of it like, or, or if I see it in a store. Like if I got to go to like the liquor store for one of my clients and, and buy their bottle, I'll, I'll pull it off the bottle and I'll just remake it in Illustrator. Mm -hmm. And when I say pull it off, I just take a photograph of it, bring it into Illustrator and then redraw it with vectors, which is you know, not easy. So yeah. that, that always makes it a little bit more complicated. And if I know I have to do that, I'll charge them more you know, for the computer time. Now, you're kind of known for doing these signs you've made some crazy ones with like cheap metal wrapping around blocks of letters um i can't think of the the one that was it for a I, record store or something i did a tangare i did a tangare yeah, yeah. That's, yeah and um do you know exactly how it's going to look when you're done or do you leave a little bit of openness during during the build uh i never know <laughs> you never know <laughs> so, so I, have, I have an idea i'm joking i have an idea but there is always room for changing things up and, and shifting it around and, mm -hmm. you know, and like going in a different direction. The build that I'm working on now is the, is that bar cart. And then it gets a, it gets the bullet logo marquee letters across the top. And each one of the letters is filled with uh, light bulbs, like one and a half inch light bulbs. So it looks like an old vaudeville sign. Yeah. I'm so looking I at the photos of it now. Are you doing all the, the wiring and mm -hmm. the wiring actually was real easy. I, I thought 
uh, and then Bob, to your point, talking about when to delegate, you, that was, you know, your topic idea is when to delegate or give stuff away. Um, similar to that vein this week, two, two interns started working for me one last week and one this week. And they're both very, very good young high school kids. And, uh, they immediately helped me out with this. And, um, I sent one to the store. I said, I want this kind of light bulb on this kind of rope. And he came back with a couple choices and the one he picked I was able to disconnect the light bulbs right off of the wire. I was like, just they're not meant to do that, but I was able to like look at how they were manufactured, and then with a with a pair of uh, pliers or or even actually with a chisel, I pried the back off. So each one yeah. of those sockets, I was able to take off of the rope or the, you know the the, mm. the wire mm-hmm. one at a time, glue them into the letters, and then put the wire back on the back of them where I wanted instead of because yeah. they were separated one foot at a time. So you see in the pictures, the letters are now only really two inch. The the light bulbs are two inches apart at the very most. So I would have had 12 inches of wire between each one of those light bulbs to hide in the back. So I was able to pull all the, the light sockets off and then reattach them once I knew where they were going to be. So that's, that'll all be in the video ultimately. Hmm. But, but yeah, that, uh, and that was a little tricky because I wasn't sure. Cause once I made the letters and they were all glued together with the sockets glued inside them, I was like, if this doesn't work, I got to go to plan B and go buy another strip of lights and, and hide the, the bunch of wire behind them. But I was, it was able to work out. This is more sophisticated than the Tangare sign that I did last year. Because um, the Tangare sign, I just used Christmas lights. Because those letters ultimately were so skinny. Mm. I could only fit Christmas lights in between them. Yeah. And uh, so I just drilled little holes and then they just glued the Christmas lights in and just buried the wire behind the letters. The back of the letters looked like, you know, crazy circuit board. It was just jammed full of wires. This one is much more cleaner, ultimately, when you see it. Hmm. You said something there earlier about, <clears throat> excuse me, about um, you know finding the logo for the company online and um, and tracing it and stuff. A word of warning about that: I did that for one of my first sponsors for video, and they didn't even ask me to use the logo. I just thought, hey, they're sponsoring a video. I'll be nice and put the logo in there. So I grabbed it offline. I was in kind of a hurry, so I, I you know searched for it, found it, dropped it in the video, rendered the video, uploaded it spread it to my Patreon people, I got to see it first. So it had, you know, the video had existed. And then when they finally saw it, they immediately responded with, that's the wrong version of our logo. And hmm. it was like, you know, some revision that was like two years behind. It was just like not even noticeably different, but some yeah. art guy, you know, knew the difference. And so instead of me, you know, just going to them and asking for it, I was trying to save time for their benefit. And just found one, but it wasn't exactly. And I, and I totally understand that because I personally am really particular about how my brand is used and how my logo and the spacing and the color. In fact, somebody uh, is doing an article about me and they sent me this header image yesterday and said, you know, how's this look? And I was like, well, let me <laughs> redo it and send it to you. <laughs> and which is, you know, he totally understood. But I'm, I understand about being really particular about how your brand and your logo is, is shown and that's yeah. used in the way that you want it used. So if you are going to be, you know, going into trying to make signs to sell for people or, or whatever, keep in mind how important branding and specificity to branding is yeah. to yeah, a it's, lot, it's a lot really of important. It really is important. A lot of big brands will have what they call a style guide. So yeah. if mm-hmm. you're going to use their branding, you have to go by all the rules in the style guide. And there might be and, and there might be things in there like nothing can be uh within a half inch of the logo or you have to use this type and you have to make sure the kerning and the lighting is this way and only these colors and you can't use this type of logo on a black and white image. You have to use this logo. Like some, some brands are very particular and they have a complete style guide written out, you know, with all these crazy rules. I used to work for Dell right before this, you know, doing this stuff full time. And a company of that size, you know, they have 100,000 employees or something, you know, worldwide into all sorts of different things. And the style guide for them was insanely detailed. Mm-hmm. And their logo is, is it's a one color, really simple logo. And it's used, you know, it looks the same everywhere. You would know it if you saw it. And it's because that style guide is so strictly enforced within yeah. everything that they, they do. They just want to make sure it's consistent across everything because that yeah. is their brand that represents them. So. Yeah, because then when you see when you see like a corporate logo that's a little wonky because maybe it's been copied too many times or you know it just wasn't it just wasn't rendered well you get a little you, you don't trust it you're like hmm. yeah 
it's like the emails off. you get from like you know air quotes Amazon that are like, hey, you need to update your account, and you can tell <laughs> <Yeah>. that <laughs> it's like a screenshot of Amazon that they took. Exactly, and, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, that happens with like you get like a phony Facebook email. It's like, hey, you have an urgent message. Like, well, I would have got that some other way. I don't need to get it this way. Yeah. yeah, but sometimes people just impulsively click on that stuff because they see the colors and they, you know, they're also used to seeing the brands. Mm-hmm. But, <clears throat> but I, I've been actually afforded the uh, the license to play around with some of these logos, like Dickel and stuff. Actually, recently Dickel's come down, and and uh, I've been told that the word Dickel is 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 kind of they want to enforce the whole word George Dickel. So and they have a couple of new options. So you'll see that I'm going to be working on a I'm working on my my video where I take the truck and I turn it into a a shelf. That project is is about eighty percent done, but the branding now is what's taking place. And I'm going to do the tailgate stamp thing in the tailgate, and it's going to say George Dickel. Oh, nice! And, it's, and then they gave me a new font to use, and uh, you know, a new a new lock, which uh, I think is going to be cool. So I'm going to be dealing with that uh, in a couple of weeks because uh, I'm going away to New Orleans to deal with all this other stuff. So I'll be gone for about a week. Jimmy, uh, I've, yeah. I've seen all this the commercial signs that you've done. Have you? done anything that's just for yourself uh well obviously i do i do my duress all the time whenever i'm testing anything i always just cut my duress to thing just for fun um but uh i'm looking around it's funny because when you said uh, y- your grandpa did the fish and and i just looked at one they're incredible my dad always used to do like these old whales he would do like the profiles of whales hmm. for some reason him and his friends got into this sort of like uh, colonial like mystic seaport like fisherman like theme and then when talking about in the 70s and when my dad was doing woodwork he was doing a lot of these like whale profiles and then you write the number of the house on it so outside the house is a like a big profile of like a sperm whale and it says the number of the house on it and hmm. um, so growing up and now the funny thing is is I they've like churned up in my life and I found them upstate and Taylor immediately was like oh my god those are so cool where'd you get those I said my dad made them 30 years 40 years ago she's like we have to hang them up so in my house upstate, I have these whales that say Duresta on them in script that my dad, I have three of them that my dad made. And I guess my dad was as obsessed with his name as I was because he, <laughs> he, he, whenever he had nothing to do, he would just write Duresta on a whale. So <laughs> there's three of them upstate and then there's about uh, two or three of them at, at my mother's house. And then my father's got a couple at his house. And I think my brothers all have one. So it's just a funny thing. He was always like, oh, let me try this shape. Let me try that shape. All just variations. It sounds and, like you uh, might have your next t-shirt design there. <laughs> whale with your name on it yeah. that'd be awesome yeah <laughs> that's a funny idea yeah so and then i just i i do experiment um i'm trying to think of i'm looking around my apartment now well you did have the one sign that was in like we used it in one of our first episodes oh, the yeah. mark twain um oh that's right the, uh, oh yeah that's right i made that for a video and then making it yeah the making it logo which is where we got our name um, it was a TV show pitch I did, and I made that whole thing out of uh, copper. So I made the letters out of copper. I didn't videotape it because I wasn't doing videos at the time. Um, but I made the sign to present the concept of the show, and uh, they, we ended up naming the show Hammered. Uh, but the sign is hanging in my shop, and so that's just another sign that I made. Sometimes I'll make those letters just to practice a technique. So I was kind of just practicing channel letters, you know, where like you just kind of it looks like it's just made out of a big chunk of copper when in fact it's all just flat sheets, hmm. you know, banded together. But um, I mean, the reason I wanted to talk a little bit about this was because now that everybody has the CNC and the X carve is pretty uh, uh, prevalent now, it seems a lot of people are ending up with the X carve. Um, it's real easy to make signs or to make stencils to repeat signs. You know, like uh, you see, like I said, over your shoulder, it says, welcome to my garden, Bob. Mm -hmm. It's easy to make stuff like that now. It's funny. uh, So one of my interns that's working for me this week, we just got our X carve up and running. And the very first thing he carved was my name. (laughs) I don't know why. (laughs) I think he just was, he just wanted to show me because he knows it's kind of a joke with me, but he made it so that it would be a rubber stamp. So he made it in reverse. So nice. Yeah. So he's, he's over there. He's at the shop right now playing around with it. Um, So they just got it put together, and then yesterday the two of them were troubleshooting it. Alan and Matt, they were troubleshooting it and getting it working. And uh, uh, Andreas came by last night. Andreas Eckberg from uh, you guys, we all hung out. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, he came by last night, so he got a chance to look at the look at our machine and troubleshoot it. And then so we went live online with Zach for a minute. We asked uh, Zach at uh, Inventables. He happened to be manning the uh, the live chat, so he he answered a few questions for us. So we got we got the thing in order, and today we're actually 
we're actually getting results. You, you mentioned the, the sign above my shoulder. So it's like one of those signs, it's hand-painted for people that can't see it, but it's one of those signs that you would buy, at, you know, like a Cracker Barrel or something that you would hang, or maybe your parents would hang, you know, behind their house or something. And you're totally right, Jimmy. Having a CNC would let you produce stuff like that to sell at craft shows or to sell mm-hmm. at, you know, anything. Uh, you could produce tons of that type of stuff to sell, and I'm sure it would sell really, really well. And then even the cameo, which you guys turned me on to, you know, the cameo silhouette, the silhouette cameo, the uh, yeah, yeah. The, the the cutting machine. Uh, a fan came to the shop this week. Um, uh, Travis Moore came to the shop this week. He's a, a new friend. And he showed me some things where he had the cameo and he, he cut out letters in the cameo, stuck it to stainless steel, and then put it in an acid bath. And the whole background melted away, and then peeled away the letters, and so the let it looked like an old, uh, mm. it looked like an old um, Art Deco sign. I mean, he obviously used the Art Deco lettering, but then you paint the black, you paint the background black, and you just give it a buff, and then all the stainless steel is shiny. So it's pretty incredible, like you know, all these different simple technologies that that are available to play with, and you know, and, and all this technology is obviously available on YouTube when it comes to like etching steel and stuff inside of the yeah. assets and stuff like that. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's amazing now. Cause I, when I worked in a sign shop in 1983 and 84, they just got what was called the plotter, which is the machine that cuts the vinyl. And they just started, there was one guy in the shop that knew how to like put the letters on trucks and stuff. So he was the guy. So they would, there was one person who had to use the computer and she would cut all the letters out. And he was the one guy who knew how to like, make the transfer you peel away all the background then you stick the transfer paper on and you peel it and then you lay it on the trucks so i mean i i saw that technology in its infancy it hasn't changed much at all actually just the one thing that has changed is that now the average artist can go out and buy one of those machines you know obviously you can get the cameo or you can spend some money and get like a 30 inch wide one and you can make some really big stickers so uh, in fact, uh, did you guys have you noticed the trend? And it's been at least seven or eight years now. Graph, uh, uh, graffiti artists are buying those machines, and really? they're making and they're making yeah they're making their logos with with all the colored vinyl. So if if a guy has like a logo that has say like three or four colors in it, he'll literally cut out each section of the colors and then multi- then lay the, layer them so that his his tag mm-hmm. will be all those colors. And so now the final thing is like all the the colors stacked up and then he'll make 10 or 20 of them. And then, you know, he'll go bombing his tag around town. Is that what the kids It's vinyl instead of, that's right. It's vinyl. No, no, it's all vinyl. Yeah. So, but it looks just like, you know, it's like if, you know, you hand draw your, your tag, whatever your tag is, you bring it into illustrator, you clean it up, you give it a couple of layers. And now it goes from like being like a hand drawn thing to like a, like a beautiful, like branded graphic. Because huh. it's like all clean, sharp edges. And let's say if it's three colors and it has an outline or, you know, or, or a stroke, you make the one bigger and then you make it smaller and then you stick it on top of the colors and then you have like a stroke around the outside of the thing. And if there's any other color breaks, you just add them all to it. And, uh, I'd yeah, like to so try we'll, that. That sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. So if you layer the colors of the cameo you know, that you get out of your cutting machine, you end up with some really cool. So, I mean, you could totally do your sticker, Bob. You, know, you do the orange splash and then you do the white. Thing over it, yeah, definitely. You, sure. the way you've been manifesting it is just doing the white graphic, right? That just kind of stands alone. The pieces yeah. are stacked in space. Yeah, yeah. Then you could put that over the, you know, the orange square or, or the splash. Hmm. So. Um, David, have you done any sign work? Not a whole lot. No. Um, and by uh, not a whole lot, I mean none. <laughs> I'm well, waiting. You, to have, you have done like the the uh, inlay stuff. I mean, you made yeah. a couple of small signs. I, right? A couple, a couple small ones, and I've got. We're gonna redo our mailbox real soon, and I'm I'm gonna design a mailbox, and I'm gonna do uh, wooden inlays of letters, and that's gonna be done on the CNC. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I guess I did do the um, be curious CNC sign mm-hmm. a few weeks ago, a couple months ago. Um. But I mean, this is, but you like, but you know, you should think of yourself as a sign maker because you've been designing websites for how long and you're a graphic designer. Sure. And I, I'm, I take photos of signs that I like all the time. Like 
Yeah. I, just, I use my phone as, as, as a tool, like, oh, I like the way that looks. Snap it just to keep that in the, yeah. in the memory banks and not to rip it off, but to use it as inspiration later. So No, no, it's awesome. I mean, T- Taylor and I just drove through Lake George and you guys are in like kind of old country, middle America, where these beautiful 1950s signs that are like abandoned on buildings. Yeah. You know, there's lots of cool stuff in Louisville, I've noticed, like old neon signs. But we just drove through Lake George, which is a big tourist section in New York State. And there's tons of beautiful old hotels like motorins from like 1940s and 50s obviously there's some new ones which have cheesy signs like you know motorins that are like you know all uh you know chain motels but then you have these beautiful like the mohican hotel which is just owned by some guy and his family mm. and you know it's the it's the it's like the the, the buffalo nickel in neon which is yeah. incredible um, so there's this, so much beautiful signage i mean if people just need inspiration you know especially like Taylor and I spent a lot of time in Chicago and there's so many beautiful old neon signs in, you know, different parts of Chicago. So, you know, this, every city's got their old sign. Somebody actually sent me a, a thing on Craigslist said for free, come take it away. A baked enamel sign for a car dealer from like the 1940s, probably for an old Chevy dealer. And it was all neon. And it said, come take it away. I've stored it for too long. I don't need it. Mm-hmm. And by the time I called them, somebody had taken it away. Yeah. Like that was that was in the in, you know the tri-state area. Yeah, I mean those things are always hot hot items on like American Pickers and shows like that. So, well, actually, do you guys remember um, when I did the TV show Dirty Money? We found that neon sign that said bar. Yeah, we went to mm-hmm. that shop. We had like a scheduled thing to buy at that shop. But, like you're gonna go in here, you're gonna look around, and you're gonna want to buy this. <laughs> so we went to the shop. I looked around. I'm like, I want to buy this. And then it was like a big to do. Like we had to call the network producer. Jimmy doesn't want to buy the thing we had to buy. He wants to buy this other thing. And <laughs> actually, so it turned into a real sh- episode. It was like one of the only episodes that turned out to be somewhat real, real, real um, mm. throughout. You know, every episode had moments of reality, but, you know, everything is kind of manipulated. But we ended up mi- buying that sign. And I can't remember the numbers. We ended up like we bought it for like maybe three or four hundred dollars. My friend did the neon basically for free to be on TV. And we ended up selling it for like twenty five hundred bucks. And the guy we sold it to, I saw him about 10 months later. He sold it for $10,000. Whoa. No joke. I, so he goes, I go, hey, I go, how much did you get for it? He goes, I'm afraid to tell you. I don't want you to be mad at me. <laughs> I go, I don't care. I go, that's your business. He's a total wheeler and dealer. I go, just tell me. I want to know. I'm dying to know. He goes, I sold it for 10 grand. Hmm. He goes, but the deal was I had to deliver it. So he goes, I drove it down. Uh, I think he said to New Orleans. And then he said on the way back, he just used the cash to buy more stuff. So. <laughs> As as someone who's worked in a in a sign shop and has made a lot of signs, do you see sign making as a dying art? Uh you know, I I think it's I, you know what's a dying art is obviously sign painting. And I probably talked about, you know, working with some of the old sign painters. Uh and uh here in Brooklyn we have sky high painters with sky high sign painters and they it just says always only hand paint. And it's like a bunch of young hipster guys that are really talented painters. And, you know, they get paid really well and they're worth it. Their, their lettering skills are, are beautiful. Hmm. And if you happen to be walking by their spot in Kent Street, New York City, um, on, in Williamsburg, look inside their shop and they have tons of cool old signs. They only like collect cool old signs that are like either hand painted or just really good graphic. So when you walk by, it, it's like a museum when you look inside their place. But um, guys like that are very rare. That's why they get paid so well because they literally just take a photograph. I mean, there's methods and ways of making a hand painted photographic quality image. So they'll, they'll basically like paint a bottle. They do a lot of bullet bourbon stuff too. So they'll paint like a bottle of bullet on the side of a building and it looks just like a wet photograph bottle from a ph- photography shoot. Um, but they also do, you know, beautiful graphic 19, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s looking hand lettering. Nice. I like, like you don't see too many custom, like one-off signs anymore. I, I think where you do see awesome signs is, coffee houses and like new breweries yeah at least, yeah, least, definitely. At least where i'm at and uh so i'm just wonder. i was just wondering you know like is hand handmade signs is that a is that going away but well you know what's going away i think is like the, the ability to bandsaw the way i do but it's going away and i don't care that it's going away because the cnc is so much better i mean i can hand bandsaw stuff all day long but it's not going to be as precise as, as a vector you know, so I, I have the ability to bandsaw letters like I did in the Nashville sign. I, I ended up pans, bandsawing a lot of the letters just because it was easier than setting up the file because um, those letters were just straightforward. And then the ones, the, the bigger letters that had graphic 
elements on the face. So I was like, they have to be carved on the machine. In the old days, I would have just cut that element out and just nailed it to it. So instead of it being carved in, it would have just been something raised up on the surface. You know, it would have been another bandsaw layer. But I, I think, uh, you know, if it's a dying art, maybe bandsawing is a dying art because now CNC is taking its place. But like I said, I, you know, I think it's just the natural progression of technology. You know, the CNC machine is is always going to be perfect. And what clients want is their logo represented perfectly. Yeah. Bob, have you done any signs recently or do you have anything planned? So I, I did my logo for Maker Fair a couple of years ago. And um, it was it was like the the largest use of a CNC I had done to date, which was really interesting, you know, trying to engrave out letters that were, you know, my font is kind of a thick font. And so cutting out this basically like an inch wide vertical stripe with a eighth inch bit takes a while. And you do that one with one letter, that's one thing, but then you do, I like to make stuff. <laughs> that's a lot of letters, right? Yeah. And so I ended up having to do it in multiple pieces. I did the orange box as a block. I did the white cut out in that. And so there were multiple paint applications on that single piece. And then all the letters were cut out down into another piece. And so that was kind of interesting just because it forced me to kind of pre-plan like where are the levels of the sign? What has to be cut in? What has to be cut you know, around? You know, what's the paint layering scheme? And like, you know, paint one and then sand off, you know, the, the top layer and then paint the color over it. So I did that one, and then I did um, some palette stuff where I cut out, I made a palette box, and then I cut out the letters or the logo out of acrylic and then glued them inside the box, and then used LEDs. So it was a good way to make a light-up sign. Um, but other than that, I haven't really done any sign work. I've done a lot of graphic design work. I've done a lot of sticker stuff, like you talked about, Jimmy, with the... Um, with the silhouette and a friend of mine used to work or several friends of mine used to work in a sign shop when I was in college. So I was around what they were doing and the printing process and stuff like that. But I've never actually physically made a whole lot of signs. One thing I do think is really cool about making signage that I would like to do more of is mixing the different media. Um, you know, the thing you're working on that you sent us pictures of Jimmy is, is metal and lights and there's wood elements. And I think to me, those are the most effective you know, physical signs because they you see like a different character of the old wood or really nice wood, you know, or you get, mm -hmm. there's so many different types of lighting you can put within a sign to give it a different effect. You know, like those bulbs that you used in that one, if you had used LEDs, it would have looked entirely different, you know, and yeah. if you had used RGB LEDs where they could, the light could change color, that adds a whole nother dimension to the material mm -hmm. color. Yeah. And, you know, so I think mixing those media together uh, within signs can give you a lot of variation. Yeah. And that's why, I mean, I wanted to talk about this just to encourage people. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, and I'm going to give my, my buddy, uh, Adam McMillan a shout out. He's uh, going to be excited that I mentioned them. I hope he's listening. Um, he, I've been watching his, uh, sign work on Instagram and, and Facebook and he does some really fun stuff and he doesn't seem like he has an overly complex shop. He's doing some really beautiful signs with lights and multiple layers and, you know, plasma cut steel and a lot. I mean, I don't even know if he has a CNC. looks like he does it by hand. And uh, he seems like he's getting really good work, really beautiful mm. stuff. And it's all just cut steel, you know, for a lot of it. Some of it's plastic, some of it's, uh, you know, aluminum. Um, and then also, uh, I mean, looking at his, his, uh, his Instagram is reminding me too that, you know, like stamped, burned stamps and all that stuff. You know, I consider all that signage, you know, just doing graphics. Like I said, you know, I, even though you guys don't physically make signs, the fact that you design logos and stuff, that's all in the, in the same category. You know, and then the branding and the way the stickers are going around now and, you know, everybody, it's funny because since so many of us are, are getting stickers and giving stickers, to see how each one of us does our graphics on that little, you know, four by two inch space, you know, that's, that's a sign in and of itself, you know, mm -hmm. so if you start thinking of all these little spaces where we're leaving our names, you know, all of our, you know, all the YouTube world, everybody is into signage in one way or another and, you know, you should really consider yourself you know, inventor of images and, and a sign maker in that way. You I, know? you know, I'm so inspired to go make a sign right now that I've, <laughs> oh, I've, I've been writing down ideas as we're doing this. And so I, I encourage anybody else who has made signs or is going to make signs, like leave comments on, on the, on the website of showing some of the things you made, because I know I'm ready to go down in the shop right now and, and do a, a make something sign. So, 
Hmm. <laughs> right on. That's cool. Yeah. That would be a cool challenge just to, to get everybody to submit signs that they made yeah. in the yeah, comments like, so we can see them. Like, uh, uh, Dave, your, your, the Drunken Woodworker, your classic logo that, that you've had now for, I guess, over a year or more, you know, the sticker that you gave me that I have, mm-hmm. that would make a beautiful CNC, you know, the combination of, you know, just regular, like you could even m- m- print it, say, like 20 inches big, right? And then m- mask a piece of wood with just like rubber tape, like electrical tape, cut it out, pull out the background, and then sandblast everything out around uh, it. Yeah. And then, the, you know, the the electrical tape will reflect the sandblasting and the open wood will accept it. And then you'll have like a beautiful two texture, you know, you stain it. So there's all kinds of things. I mean, that's not even using a CNC. That's just using an X-Acto knife and a, and a sandblaster. You could just go yeah. buy it, you know, at a f- tractor supply. If you do have a CNC, uh, a, a quick thing that I that I did for one of my booths uh, about a year ago was just I took some walnut plywood, and the the walnut veneer is really really thin. So I just cut out my my logo uh, in the in the walnut plywood. So the logo mm-hmm. was actually the the color of the wood underneath the birch. Oh yeah, and yeah. Then That's like the plastic a, we talked about. Yeah, exactly. And so you had this awesome contrast, and it was a mm-hmm. really quick and easy sign. And actually. A lot of people came over and picked up my booth sign to look at that, you know, because yeah, right it's interesting to people. Yeah, you, you should talk about the "be curious" sign that you did because you had a really cool technique for keeping letters aligned. Talk yes. about that a little bit. So what I did was a lot of times these letters, there's there's uh, the space in between the letters can be very important, and so if you are cutting out all these letters individually, then you have to go back and you have to line them up. And you have to look at your your kerning and everything. And so what I did was, uh, let's say I had a half inch piece of of wood, and I reversed the sign. So it said be curious, but looking at it from the the back side, it's reversed. And instead of cutting all, all the way through, I cut almost all the way through. Right. And then the the side this is kind of hard to explain but the side that i cut then i glued i put glue on the keeper pieces and i glued that on uh, a, a backing board a substrate and then sanded through the top to reveal the letters and then the the non-glued pieces came loose and was removable does that make sense yeah so you see and see the letters in reverse like a printing block mm-hmm. uh, just so it read reverse and you CNC right up to the other side, maybe a couple hundredths of an inch. You left some, some basically a paper thin layer there. Yes. Glued down the letters you want to keep, sanded away the paper thin, and then the background left. Yep. And yep. all will be explained in the in the links down below because I have a video <laughs> of that. Project. Yeah. 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 It's That's a good one. A, I use that technique when I'm seeing seeing letters quite a bit. Um, the only the because sometimes when you CNC letters on them, I'm going to do a tips video about the way I CNC letters. Um, but when you see and see, sometimes the letters get loose and then it throws you off your X, Y, and Z. If the, if the thing gets jammed up, the letter will jump out and then the machine will want to go where it expects not to be any material. And then it gets jammed and then you skip a couple of tooth mm. and then, and now your machine is out of its X, Y, and Z. So I use that same technique that you just described just to hold letters in place because the, they have the tab option. So it'll cut all the way through and then leave tabs. But when you use MDF, the tabs never hold. You know, the tabs have to be big. So, and since MDF is basically like paper, if you cut all the way down to say just a couple hundred of an inch be- before the other side of the wood, the letters will all hold in place. And then once you cut through or once you, you remove your board, you can literally finish the cut with an X-Acto knife mm-hmm. from the other side. So, so I do that. I use that technique just to keep letters in place. So cool. cool. Well, I'm, I don't know if you can hear the thunder. <laughs> but there, there's a very good chance I'm going to get rained on here in just a minute. So uh, yeah. unless you guys have any other awesome tips about signs. Um, no, I just think a sign is a thing that we should all, you know, I just, I just want the, the viewers and the listeners to just be encouraged to make signs. And like I said, I'm giving a shout out to, to Macmillan Industries on, on Instagram because he's got some really beautiful sign work on there. And uh, he and I have chatted a little bit uh, behind the scenes about his sign work and, um, you know, that's just quickly accessible. But just go out in your neighborhood and look around and look at the signs that aren't neon because neon's obviously, you know, a, a, a specialized industry. But look at the signs that aren't neon and, and any of those signs that aren't neon with some simple tools and just some ingenuity, anybody could make any of those signs. Yeah, so, definitely. Well, bef- before we talk about um, what we're watching right now, I want to thank Luis Gonzalez, Jeremy Pollan, Jeremy White, and Juan Vargas. 
Uh, there are top patrons on Patreon, and uh, I want to thank everybody from Patreon because you guys are awesome. And if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash making it, and that's a good way to help us keep doing the show. I also want to thank Inventables for sponsoring this episode. And now we're going to talk about what we're watching. David, what are you watching? Um, I, I said a couple weeks ago that I didn't want to take the easy way out and, and show <laughs> off somebody that – um, maybe everybody knows, but I really want to make sure everybody knows about Peter Brown. Oh uh, yeah, his, is good. yeah, because there there is a lot of woodworking stuff on the site, but there's a lot of non woodworking things, some epoxy things, and some just crazy awesome projects. The dude is so creative, and he he even he shows his failures too. There's a couple projects on there that I think that didn't come out. Correct, and I just I just like seeing that. I like seeing the process, and he, we Bob and I, I, or all three of us, got a chance to meet him uh, a yeah, couple we months ago. And yep. good dude, just a just a good yeah. dude. So really, yeah, sweet Peter Brown's YouTube channel. And uh, I'm going to take a lob too, and and say everybody check out David Welder's latest video where he takes a, a a red umbrella he found in the street and turns it into a kite with his brother. And uh, awesome. we just we just watched it at lunch, and I was so impressed. I think. Uh, it's it's just a really touching video. It looks like something that like I, it totally reminded me of something that I would have watched like on um, uh, Sesame Street in the seventies. <laughs> it's just something really you know because like you know I think I guess I'm thinking of like Red Balloon. Do you remember that yeah. video that was like a red balloon? But it, it's just so iconic that he found like a red umbrella in the street, and then just some of his filmmaking techniques are just really beautiful. And this it just really grabs me. And then. Not to mention, I don't know if you guys saw, he made these onions and then his dad went up in like 150 feet in the air, maybe taller, and put them on top of these steeples. Incredible. Just like I, mm. I, my, my heart was in my mouth when I was watching it. <laughs> oh, on a, I haven't seen crane. that. He's on, a, he's on a basket crane controlling it with the GoPro and they're right next to one of the steeples. It's like the steeple of a giant cathedral and they're right at the top and they've taken like this, they're fixing it and the crane is moving. But it looks like the steeple is moving because the GoPro is attached to the crane railing. So oh. the, the crane is waving with the wind. But the GoPro is the only reference. I mean, the, uh, the steeple is the reference point. So the reference looks like the steeple is moving. It's pretty crazy. Oh, man. Oh. Well, I actually haven't gotten to watch a whole lot this week because I'm on vacation. But everybody, if they haven't, should go watch Izzy Swan's crazy yes. walking machine video. <laughs> I was going to do Izzy today, but I know we were talking about it before we started. <laughs> I, I left him a comment saying, I feel like the only comments I ever leave you are, this is crazy, dude. Because <laughs> <laughs> every video, he's nuts. He's awesome and nuts, and it's fantastic. So, And I, you know what? I love Izzy's style. I, I love his style of like, this is what I did. And then he goes backwards in time and says, this is how I did it. I love that. Like he goes right into it. It's like, boom, this crazy contraption. All my neighbors probably think I'm nuts, but he's like walking up and down the street with this crazy thing. And then he goes backwards in time and explains it. It's, it's really, really love his style. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's uh, definitely a cool project. And apparently it's, that's not the end of it. That's like the first step of something <laughs> larger and crazier. Oh, <laughs> so he's probably going to walk all the way to St. Louis. His yeah, brain thanks. just does not operate on the same wavelength as the rest of us. He's, you know what's, he's on a higher you know what's crazy? I talked to him about that one time. I was like, so, you know, what kind of – it may have been in the brain pick we did. But it was like when you have the an idea for one of those crazy contraptions, how far do you draw it? And he's like, uh, oh, I don't sketch it. I don't do it in SketchUp. I just like start cutting gears and start cutting pieces and sticking it together. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, it's funny. When you watch that video, he's like – and when he goes, so you see the finished piece in the beginning, and then he goes, okay, so I go back in time, and I did this. He's like, oh, yeah, that's a seed I decided not to use. And the thing is, like, looks like two days worth of work, but it's yeah. not in the finished thing. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, yeah, I painted it this other color, but then I changed the color. It's like the finished thing doesn't look anything like the process <laughs> shots because yeah. he made all these changes while he was working, which is, which is great to see that. Yeah, pretty awesome. Make yeah. sure you go check that one out. I uh, guess that'll probably do it for us this week. Do you get, sure. do you want to talk oh. about? We don't have to, but do you want to talk about how we're all going to be together in a couple months? Yes. yes. Yeah. Why don't you talk about it? Go for it. Oh, great. That's a lot of pressure <laughs> on me because I don't have the dates in front of me, but I'm going to quickly look <laughs> it up. So the three of us, if I am... And Izzy. And Izzy, we're all going to be at Woodworking in America. And... September... Woodworking... Twenty America dot com. September twenty fifth through the twenty seventh, two thousand fifteen. That is in Kansas City. 
Um, so w- there's a bunch of us YouTubers are going to have a booth and we're all going to have like slotted times at this booth and we're going to be hanging out. And um, just even if you don't pay to get into the woodworking in America, the, the, the classes, you can you can still get in to see the 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 what do they call it? The, the showroom floor. Yeah. It's like the marketplace. Or marketplace something. I think it was yeah. like $10 last yeah. year. And we're going to be around town in the evenings and, and we're going to make ourselves available and it should be pretty fun. Yeah. So if you're in the area, please come hang out with us. Please come please, hang out with please, us. Please, 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 please. <laughs> we're so lonely. And um, my, I'm a, I'm a huge baseball nerd and my, my Cleveland Indians are going to be in Kansas city that weekend. So I already got tickets for Sunday's game. So I'm, I'm super excited. (laughs) Cool. Awesome. Awesome. All right, cool. Well, that's it for this week. Next week, maybe we'll all be back in our normal situations and, you know, and not outside with thunder and fireworks and stuff, but (laughs) (laughs) it would be funny if you, you you end up back in your shop with those birds on your shoulder. Birds (laughs) we've been listening to the entire time. (laughs) Cool. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you next time. Later.